Well, hello everybody. It's Michael J. Burns here coming to you live on Facebook and rebroadcasting as we always do on about six or seven other platforms. And today is Friday, July 29th. And it is time for God's healing word in this year of 2022. We're over five and a half years of doing these kinds of teachings, Monday through Thursday. We teach God's healing word. But on Fridays, we teach on financial stewardship principles from the Bible. You know, the Bible has a lot to say about it. And we're going to get into that today. I just want to let you know this is the last day we're going to be coming to you earlier than our normal 9 p.m. Central Standard Time hour because all this week has been camp meeting uh, here at Kenneth Hagin Ministries here in Brooklyn, Arrow, Oklahoma, which my wife and well, most of me have been attending more because she's working, but I've been attending it as well as uh, today I began the School of the Holy Spirit with Dr. Ken Stewart. It was six hours of, uh, of classes and I'm telling you, I'm reared and ready to go tonight. <laughs> Although I won't be talking about what I learned today, I am going to be, uh, I, I'm in a growing process, as you know, even though I've been in ministry for 40 years, I've been very excited to learn some of the things I learned today, things that were reminders and things that really stirred me up, praise God. And so we've had a very, very, very busy week, as I'm sure many of you have as well. And so tonight we're going to get into uh, some of these financial stewardship principles, and I'm looking forward to getting into it tonight. I'm asking you if you just uh, visit our website. We have our information right here over, over my shoulder. And if you'll go there and uh, you'll take advantage of all the free stuff. We have audios, links to our YouTube channel, links to our mobile app, and then we have our e-newsletter sign up. Now, the August 1st will be the day we send out the August newsletter. It's already done. It's been set up to go out. And I'm looking forward to you receiving it. Now, if you're not signed up to receive it, we have just under 580 people signed up. And we would love for you to be able to sign up for it on our website. There'll be a pop-up window to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Or you could go down to the bottom right of our website and sign up there. Now, this month's theme is going to be on the local church. And we're going to talk about the value and the importance of it so you don't want to miss this month's newsletter, especially if you're a pastor, because there are some great resource, resources there for you, as well as some great teaching for every believer, and it will show them the value and importance of the local church. I'm very excited about this newsletter, so I, I want you to sign up for it, make sure you receive it, and you, you don't have to, it's a big newsletter, you don't have to try to read it in one sitting, but take time to, you know, when you get it on the first, the next couple of days, take different articles, Read them, watch the videos, the short videos, only a minute or two. And I know they'll be a great blessing to you as well. Praise God forever. Hey, let's have a word of prayer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we end another week today on this Financial Stewardship Friday, we come before your presence because, Lord, you've invited us to do that. We have the right, based on the blood of Jesus, to come into your presence in prayer and in fellowship with you, in worship and praise of who you are. You're a great God, our Father. That's right, you're a heavenly Father. We call you Daddy, we call you Papa, and we love you so very much. We thank you that you call us your sons, and you call us your daughters. We are so grateful for this right standing that we have been given by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, Father, I'm asking you as we teach on financial principles that you will think to my mind and speak through my lips to these, your people. You'll cause their ears to listen, their minds to be open, and their hearts to be receptive to the things of the Word and of the Spirit of God. Lord, we're thanking you that we're all coming up higher to a greater level of financial increase and prosperity that is from your hand. Lord, the world right now is looking to win this big lotto, the uh, Mega Millions, which is over a billion dollars, and people are buying tickets left and right, thinking that that's the main way you want to increase them. Now, people can get increased, but prosperity in the hands of a fool, the Bible says, will destroy them. But if it comes into the hands of a righteous man or woman, there it will be a blessing to the work of God throughout the earth. You're the source, Father God, not the lottery. You're the source, Father God, not uh, any other thing, our jobs or our companies or whatever we look to, the bank or credit cards, they're not our source. You are the source. 
And we thank you that you're increasing us more and more. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, we covenant with you to give you the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanks for it all. In Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Well, as you know, uh, we talked about a moment ago about uh, this Mega Millions. Uh, listen, I'm not telling you to play or not play it, you know, but if you do with it, remember MJP Ministries, remember your local church, remember some really good ministries that are touching the world uh, because that'd be, you'd be in a position to help ministries uh, all over the world that are doing the work of the gospel. But remember, though, we're saying God is absolutely our source. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody? I want to just turn off these banners here at the top, and I've got to scroll down uh, to, up to the top here to take them off, which I've just done. And I want to start off tonight uh, by talking to you about a quote that I found about Barner Research. You know, you've heard of George Barner. He has a, a, a company that does research and statistical studies and things like that. And this is something that really hasn't changed over the last decade or more. Uh, he said that uh, in the study that they revealed when economic times are tough, and how many of you know the price of gas is up, people are spending a lot more money even though it's starting to come down, which is interesting that it's coming down just prior, a couple of months before the election. But when economic times are tough, that the first area they said people will cut out of their budget is their charitable giving. Now think about that. Uh, we're having difficult economic times, but Board of Research saw that people, when they start to have economic difficulties, the first thing they cut out is their giving to charity, and that would include giving to their church giving to ministries like MJP Ministries or Billy Graham's ministry or Brother Hagen's ministry or, or Kenneth Copeland's ministry or we can think of many other good quality ministries that are teaching and preaching God's word like MJP Ministries, amen. And so uh, we're in the middle of summer right now and I remember back when I was a pastor in Long Island, New York, I actually had some of the best uh, months of the summer. I remember uh, one month Back in our church, we had uh, in our in the June and July. This is back in the nineties, uh, back in Long Island where I pastored. We had a month. I think the, uh, June and July came to a total of about over seventy some odd thousand dollars that we received special gifts. Uh, one lady gave a gift of twenty two thousand five hundred dollars, and then she gave a, uh, another check for uh, twenty thousand. I think it was another person. Uh, gave us a check for 46000 and then we had others that gave money. Actually, it was more than 70000 but in June, July, and August of that year, was one of And I said, we're going to have the best summer months. Well, no one alone were pastoring, and here we are now uh, in this new phase of ministry, Cynthia and I. And many of you know us that we were pastors in Long, Long Island, New York for 35 years. And, you know, we have a church and a congregation behind you. It's a little bit easier <clears throat> to raise the money that you need to function in the ministry, to pay the salaries, and different things like that. But when you have an itinerant ministry, and I'll be honest with you, it's a new phase for me. I, I've never really done it like this before. But we are doing this social media, and this year we've asked God to give us some partners. And we have only a limited number of partners, and uh, most give small amounts, but uh, some of if you've been taking a month of July off and they're giving, uh, but I want to say that we really need to hear from you today. We have a budget we told you about of about $714, which is a monthly budget, which is not really that much money. But this month, we've only had about $170 or so come in. And I am asking you today to consider giving uh, to our ministry. Now, certainly your, your church gets your first off the top of your giving. I would absolutely recommend that and, and say that that's what you should do. But then you can give offerings to, your, to other ministries like ours, and as I mentioned, some of the others. And we're asking you today to do just that. Would you do that? Would you help us right now? We need to not just meet our budget, we need to exceed our budget so that we can actually do some of the things that God has put in our heart to do. We have two books ready for publication. They're already written, they just have to be uh, published and printed. And it will take several thousands of dollars to do those things. 
I want to do some traveling. And in order to travel, it costs money to travel. And we need to have an increase so we can have resources and a reserve of finances in case we run into emergencies on the road uh, with housing, with food, with other travel expenses and things, changing of flights. And so we really want to increase our accounts and our reserve for the ministry that we, we have before us to do. And I'm asking you to go to our website. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you uh, where you could go right now. Uh, this is, uh, let me just go down a little bit further here. Yeah. If you go to mjbministries.org forward slash giving, you can go there and either make a one-time gift or you can uh, become a partner. And that involves prayer. And we share many prayer points at that location, as well as you can also set up your gift to be the weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, however you feel impressed. And uh, go to mjbministries.org forward slash giving, or you can even text mjbmin uh, to 45777. Now, if you go there, that will take you right to the same giving page at the top I mentioned. Uh, or if you want to just give a one-time gift, you can also do it through the Cash App, which is dollar sign mjv ministries and so we really need to hear from some of you today and uh you know all this week there's other ministries being funded we're very happy we even gave to some other ministries as well but we need you to give to mjv ministries would you do that today would you help us i'm asking sincerely i'm not promising you that if you give you're going to have some such things happen you know when other than the fact of what god's word promise which is he said uh, men would give to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men would give into your bosom, and God would multiply the seed you have sown. I'm not going to say what that would be, but you can take God at his word and believe that as you give and support good, solid ministries like ours that are teaching and been teaching for over 35 years. We pastored, and in the last five and a half years, been doing social media ministry. So again, let me just put that up one more time. Go to mjpministries.org forward slash giving, uh, or you could text mjbmin to 45777, or the cash app, which is dollar sign mjbministries. And we would really appreciate that today. Now, I want to share with you some things uh, that I think would be really, really, really helpful today. And I believe that what I'll be sharing with you will be something of great significance. So I just want to get my slide, and I want to show you, this is what we said last week. And we asked you this question, what do you suppose is holding you back? Listen to me now. What is holding you back from the increase and uh, from living a wealthy and a prosperous life? And I shared with you the, the answer. I said, here's the answer. The answer is that, the fact that you believe that there is something holding you back from living a wealthy and prosperous life. Now think about that. If you believe that there's something holding you back, that's the reason you're being held back because you believe there's an issue there. Now someone said, well, Pastor Mike, you don't believe that people that are irresponsible with their spending or their saving or they're running up their credit card debt, that those are issues. Those issues, my friend, are the legitimate issues but they're a byproduct of people believing about themselves something that's contrary to the word of God. And we have to understand that God said that he has a way for you and I to prosper. And he wants to put his, and his blessing is on our life. See, we can look in the reflection of the mirror of God's word and see who we really are. God says, you're no longer a sinner. God says in his word that you're no longer a person who's sick, Know that by the stripes of Jesus, you already were healed. Now, it also says that if you prosper in your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect, and you increase your learning in your soul, you'll be in health and you'll prosper economically and financially there in Third John chapter 1 only in verse number 2. And so we understand that you have to stop seeing yourself through these natural eyes and begin to see yourself through what the Word of God says, which will ultimately affect the actions that you are taking uh, in your life. Now, I'm going to show you something here in Genesis. Uh, I'm just scrolling down to get to the scripture here because, you know, this new program we have here, 
is actually uh, hurting us and not helping us as much as I wish they would help us. But I want to find that scripture here uh, in Genesis uh, chapter, let me see, where is that at there? Uh, oh, my word. Hang on a second. Let me switch my glasses around because one of them is for seeing distances and the other is seeing up close. Well, here's one scripture I want to look at right now. And it's a scripture that talks about that there's a wealthy place that God has for you. Now, think about that. God has a wealthy place that he wants you to, to live ultimately in. Can I get a good hearty amen? And Psalm 66, 12 says, God, that was caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. Praise God. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that the scripture I want you to turn to is found here in Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 26 and verse uh, number one. And we talked about this some last week, but I want to really highlight some things that I really believe will be helpful to you. In Genesis 20, 26 and one in Genesis, it says there was a famine in the land. Now, it wasn't really all that uncommon for there to be famines like there are like there are famines still today. But we see something happen here. There was a famine in the land, and it talks about this famine repeating itself. It says beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Now, notice that our lives, as I said, are not, uh, uh, our lives are not linear, but your life and my life, they're circular. You know, we're not all born on a line over here and, and somewhere down the line. We live our life out, raise our families, we get old and we die. No, our lives are circular. There are cycles to our life. And so the Bible talks about how Isaac was coming into the same land his father Abraham had been in. And there was a famine there that caused Abraham, his dad, to go down into a certain country where he had a lie about his wife being his sister. And Isaac went into a similar situation but the Bible says it was beside the first famine. You know, many people in life are led by their circumstances and not led by what God has said to them in his word and how God is leading them by his Holy Spirit. And I know that's contrary to how we think because we try to use our own head. I call it our noodle. <laughs> we use this thing in our brain to try to make rational, intelligent decisions and there's a place for that, no question about it. But there are some things that God is saying to us that is beyond our natural ability to be able to comprehend or understand. And so there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And the Bible says that Isaac also went down to King Abimelech. He was king of the Philistines unto Gerar. But if you skip on down to verse number 12, I want you to see something that Isaac did that Abraham did not do. Then Isaac, it says in verse 12 here, sowed in that land, the land where there was famine, and he received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And it goes on to say in verse 13, and the man waxed great, and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks. Uh, he had possessions not only of flocks, but of herds and great store of servants. And the Bible says here that the Philistines, they actually envied him. Now you can take the words here where it says uh, that he waxed great and went forward until and grew until it became very great. You could take out the word great there and actually insert the word rich. Now, think about this. Isaac became rich in a land that people were fleeing from because of the famine. As a matter of fact, the scripture actually says that Abimelech asked uh, Isaac to leave. Look at this scripture right here. This is an incredible verse of scripture here in uh, verse uh, number 16. And it says, and Abimelech, I love this here, Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us, for you are much mightier than we. Now, I want you to think about how that, what that says to us. Abimelech was the king of the city there, but he told Isaac, who was just an individual, to go away from him because he said, you're mightier than we are. Think about that. Why would King Abimelech tell Isaac to leave? How can one man be greater 
than a city. Now, I want you to think about that. I live here right now in the city of Broken Arrow in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And can you imagine me becoming so rich and so great that people here, the government of Broken Arrow in Tulsa, Oklahoma, said, listen, Michael Burns, you need to get up and get out of here. You're, you're much mightier and stronger and economically uh, increased than we are as a city, as a state, or as, a, as, a, as an area here. And you're taking over. I'm buying up houses, buying up land. And they were like, leave. We don't want you around here. You, you, you're going to own all of this eventually. Well, you see, that's really kind of what was happening to Isaac here as he went forward and became very rich and very great. And the Bible says to the point that he was envied by the Philistines. Praise God forevermore. Now, I want you to notice something here. Uh, it says here that now, that uh, where others fail, listen to this now, because of two things, fear that was based on external circumstances. Come on. Isaac moved in the opposite direction. He moved fearlessly in faith and sowed in the midst of a famine based on something. Listen to this now. Based on something internal. See, now, if, if Isaac had been like most people, he would have looked at external circumstances. He would have heard the word famine. He would have gotten out of, the, of that area like his father Abraham did. But because Abraham didn't do anything about the famine in this land, this circular or this cycle of famine began to repeat itself in his son's day. I wonder in your life as a mom and a dad, and uh, maybe you're living in what your grand, your parents lived in, or your grandparents, or even your great grandparents. That cycle has been repeating itself generation by generation. And, you know, we often say, well, I guess it's just our lot in life. I guess we just have to grin and bear it. The truth of the matter is you need to begin to say to God, say, God, how can I break this cycle in my generation so my children and my grandchildren don't have to deal with it? Uh, like Isaac had to deal with what his father Abraham failed to do. I want you to understand how important this is. See, Isaac prospered. How did he prosper? By sowing in the abandoned fields of that area and of those who fled in fear at word of famine being in the land. Now Isaac increased, the Bible says how? He increased by the blessing of God that was vacant on those that move with fear. See, fear and faith are similar in that they both attract and they both repel. And faith, of course, attracts what comes from God or repels what comes from Satan. Fear attracts what comes from Satan and repels what comes from God. And these people who heard about a famine, they literally began to uh, to leave the land because they were attracting life. They were attracting famine. And so they, they moved out of that area. Isaac decided to stay there in faith. And he had the blessing of God upon his life. And the Bible says that he began to prosper. And so much so, again, as we said, that the Philistines envied him. And even King Abimelech asked him to leave because he was greater and mightier than them. So let me encourage you today. And this is really what I want to do. We serve a good God. <laughs> and I want you to hear that today. A faithful God uh, who has promised you and me that he would never leave us. Come on nor would he ever forsake us. Come on. He promised to supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Bible goes on to say, and this is an Old Testament scripture, that it is impossible for God to even lie to us. And so if God cannot lie, then you know what? It behooves you and me to step out on God's word and to test or prove what God has said. See, once we see uh, this issue of God being faithful uh, to his promises, you know what's going to happen to you and me? Our confidence will keep growing. And guess what? So should our giving. Now, if you can, if God can get it through you, then I believe God will give it to you. I believe that if God says, listen, this is a man, this is a woman, that if I give them uh the blessing of finances in their life, that I can trust them. Now, can God trust you? You know, I watch, uh, not a lot, but I, I've seen game shows and 
Uh, you know, we have this one channel that we have on Deal or No Deal. Remember they show Harry Mandel and those beautiful women, those 26 cases, and they have different amounts from one penny up to a million dollars and stuff like that. And Howie Mandel asked these people in these old shows, uh, he says, what would you do if you won a million dollars? And I can tell you that most of the people say things like, well, I'd help my parents, I'd buy a house, I'd buy a car for me and my wife, my kids, I would pay, pay, pay off bills, I would, I would do all these things with a million dollars. But very few people actually said I would help fund and finance my local church or fund and, uh, fund and finance different ministries that are taking the gospel around the world. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? That people are not making finances and financial giving is a top priority in their life. And so as a result, what's happening is these folks are, you know, many of them don't win, or if they do, maybe they win lesser amounts, but still, some of them will walk away with a couple hundred, or two or three, four hundred thousand dollars, and maybe they had a small amount in their case, they're on deal or no deal. But it's sad to think that these people are getting this kind of wealth, and it is ultimately going to do what Proverbs chapter 1 says, that prosperity in the hand of a fool uh, will destroy them. Think about that. Prosperity in the hand of a fool will destroy them. Praise God forevermore. And so when you start to seek or you begin to put God first, the kingdom of God, uh, especially when it comes to your giving of the finances, God has placed uh, you as a steward over. That's something to really understand here, that God has put this on you, finances as a steward, not necessarily as an owner, even though you think you may own it, then I'm telling you, you're going to see increase in your life when you start to honor God with what he's given you. See, the key is your motive, as stated back in the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. And look what this verse says here. It says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Who gives you power to get wealth? The Lord your God, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. And I love how the complete Jewish Bible says it. No, you ought to remember Adonai, Adonai your God. That's one of the Hebrew names they call God, Adonai, because it is he who is giving you the power to get wealth in order to confirm his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as is happening today. So God is wanting to give you, uh, and, and this is basically what he told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And of course, we know based on Galatians 3 and verse number 29, and I just want to show you that verse of scripture. Uh, I know I have it here. It's just amazing how sometimes these things are getting lost here, but Galatians 3, 29 says that if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and you're an heir according to the promise. See, what God said to Isaac is what God said to Abraham, and guess what? It's what God is even saying to you today. And it goes on to say in verse 29 from the Passion Translation, and since you've been united to Jesus, the Messiah, you are now Abraham's child, and you can inherit all the promises of the kingdom realm. Praise God forevermore. I don't know about you, but I'm a inheritor of the kingdom realm. That's why Matthew 6, 33 says, if you'll seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God will add all the things you need, glory to God. And I want to just show you one more scripture before we close today from 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And look what it says here. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. This, my friend, is the plan of God for you in your life. Now, certainly you could give with the wrong motive. You're trying to give to get rich. See, the prosperity that God puts, the blessing of the Lord, doesn't help you get wealth so much as it attracts wealth. 
and God will make your job and you become more attractive as you add value to your company, as you add value to other people, which is what we're trying to do. People will begin to respond uh, in that regard. And God says, if you'll live by these kinds of principles, giving of your time, your talents, your treasures, your finances, God says adding value to others, making that your top priority and putting the first, the kingdom of God, adding value to the work of God in the earth. God says, I will bless you and add everything that you need in your life in Jesus' name. Now, my name is Pastor Michael J. Burns. I uh, was a pastor for 35 years. I'm no longer pastoring, but I'm in a new phase of ministry. A pastor with my wife in Long Island, New York. And I'm telling you something, glory to God, we're no longer in that kind of a ministry today. We're in a traveling, itinerant, book writing ministry, including social media, which you're tasting of uh, right now. Praise God. Amen. And uh, so let me ask you today, would you consider our ministry among others that are out there? I'm not saying oh, your church is behind us. No, your church is ahead of us. Give to your church. Support that first and foremost. But there are other ministries, and we're an up-and-coming ministry. We proved ourselves in Long Island, New York, as Rainbow Pastors. We graduated from Rainbow Bible Training College back in 1981. And uh, we've been faithful in Long Island. They did amazing work there. Touched many, many lives. Still touching people's lives today. But we need to hear from every one of you. And so I'm asking today, if you'll go uh, to our website, mjbministries.org forward slash giving, or text MJBMIN to 45777, uh, you can give there and become a partner in prayer and giving. Now, if you just want to give, but you don't want to be the prayer partner, go to dollar sign MJB Ministries on the cash app, and we would certainly welcome that today. We love you so very much. We're glad to be with you today. Uh, go to church on Sunday. Be sure and support your local church and pastors. Help them in whatever way God will empower you to help them. And uh, we believe that you'll be blessed in the doing of that. We'll see you on Monday where we'll continue on God's healing the Word. Thank you for joining us today in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. Praise God.